This is Stu Coogan here on 90.5 tonight. I am proud to have as my guest today the new riders of the Purple Sage, or a couple of them today, uh, Buddy Cage and Michael Falzerano. Thanks for being with us, guys. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having us. Nice to be with you, Stu. That uh, little door click there proves this is live radio. Right? Yeah, there you go. Right. They, they don't let any... Now there's a guard outside the door. <laughs> That's yeah. right. You don't want stuff like this <laughs> happening. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you guys are going to be doing some shows in the area coming yeah, up, yeah. and uh, you've been doing a lot of touring lately. Uh, yeah. Your shows, uh, we were talking about, is the first one going to be Whippany? Uh, the first one's in Whippany. That's on uh, Sunday, you know, I don't know what the Sunday's date is. I think it's the, the 31st. 31st. Yeah. Right. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That's in the area. Then uh, we're going to do BB Kings in New York City on June 4th. Mm -hmm. And on June 6th, we're going to be right down here in southern New Jersey at the Stone Pony. You guys have been pretty busy because you also have, uh, and, and along with touring, you got right. the new album the out. The new album's out, right. That's why Where I Come From is the title of the new album. And that's why we're going to have a CD release party. <laughs> there, there you go. That's How you long go. did it take you guys to put this one together? Uh, it, it took, it, you know, it, we did it over um, uh, several months, although it wasn't several months worth of working nonstop. Right. What we did is, you know, while we were on the road, uh, we had a couple of days off, then we'd go to a studio, cut a couple of tracks, go back on the road, next tour, a couple of days off, go back in the studio, cut a couple of tracks, put it together, then, you know, then w at one point we, you know, had some real downtime, went in, mixed it, mastered it, and now yeah. it's in your hands. And it's, I mean, there is, a, there's a lot of great cuts on it, you know, it's, uh, let's see, I, I was really into the uh, Barracuda Moon, I mean, Where I Come From is a great tune, too, and Barracuda Moon... Is this something that you guys did together, like writing together, or, you know, how do you guys make the music? Well, most of the songs, well, seven of the songs on the album are co-writes with uh, David Nelson and Robert Hunter. Mm -hmm. Robert uh, Hunter, um, you know, he contacted Nelson. They've been friends since, I guess, they were... Yeah. <laughs> 63. Since 1963. <laughs> now, in 1963, let me think about what I was doing. I think my major problem in 1963 was a spoke on my bicycle had yeah. come up. No, anyway. So, uh, so, uh, so Hunter, uh, you know, contacted Nelson right at the time we were even just talking, beginning to talk about doing mm -hmm. a, a studio album, you know, because we'd been on the road for a couple of years at that, at that point. Um, you know, we started this thing in 05, and we just, you know, after like, in, you know, 07, 08, we started talking about doing the, a CD, and then it's just sort of began to snap, crackle, pop, and happen, you know, you got those songs. Uh, you know, because uh, you do have a couple of old favorites on here yeah, too. Yeah, well, you know, um, <laughs> well, and that it, was never the thrust yeah, of yeah. the the recording right. of the album was right. the old stuff. Right. It was all about Hunter right. Nelson's yeah. tunes yeah. And, and Michael's right. and uh, uh, one of Johnny's and one of right. Ronnie's, right. and we had a whole collection of of material to right. do a CD. We right. had a complete thing, mm -hmm. and and Michael had a bunch of. Of of uh, data, data is good. Yeah, yeah, data's uh, a good uh, I was doing data. sound check things right, that right, we mm -hmm. record. We yeah. record everything, and a couple of grooves there mm -hmm. that were like interesting enough to right. to put on the Turn copy that songs. you have, which right. is the DJ radio right. version, mm -hmm. right. as well as. Uh, 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 you, when you're talking those, you're talking like dirty business and things like right, that. Right, you know? right, right. And uh, but. Primarily, I mean, it was yeah. all about. Oh, it was all about the new stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. We, like I said, we've been on the road for a couple of years, and we felt it was. And you know, when you're doing a, a thing like this, you it's a fine line. Be, be just being some a, a band about the nostalgia of being that band, right, and about right. moving forward, and right. you know, but staying true to the legacy, which I'm, I, I think we've done pretty well. Um, and you know, when it, time came to do the new stuff, and these tunes started coming, it, it was all like a synchronicity in time. It was like. Here, let's do a new album. All of a sudden, Hunter is calling up Nelson. Nelson's coming to the table with new songs. We start mm -hmm. playing these new songs on the road, and you know uh, it, that's how the whole thing came about. You know, it was just, it wasn't some like big thought out master plan. Right. Know. It it evolved with you guys. Right. You guys on, almost on the spot back, though. Back you know? into the. Uh, I think that one of the you know the catalysts from actually really okay now it's going to happen is the songs coming down from Hunter because mm -hmm. at that point you know we still had a few songs that we were doing some new songs and some new uh, you know even cover songs that hadn't been played in, in previous years um, but once that started to happen uh, I think we all began to realize okay it's really time yeah <laughs> you know? well I mean and as you said true to the legacy right. I mean these songs even though they're brand new right. they sound vintage right you know you guys 
don't seem like you missed a step. So right. I think know. it's because of the way it was recorded. You know, everything was recorded essentially like a live show. You know, we I, mm -hmm. we had the band, we're on the road, went to a studio, set up the full band, and played just like we play live, except with headphones on. Right. You know, uh, a lot of overdubbing. And no, 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 no. And and certainly no like um. Let's do. Let's take Turk. Take thirty seven. <laughs> there was no take thirty seven. <laughs> you, you guys know. were home by then. Right. Most of the takes on that on the CD are take one, two, or three, and that and most of them are take one. You know, mm -hmm. because you you know you, you get an energy. We've been playing. It's not like oh we're unfamiliar with where we're going to go here. You know? Right. It's just capturing that moment in time, and I think we did a good job. And we, but here's the trick: we we brought this together in in 05, oh, just for the hell of it. Because somebody was offering some real money, and it was just like, okay, let's let's get her done. Was it a reunion, or was it no, just no? There's like, no reunion you know, unless I let's exhume <laughs> the bodies of three of us that are right. Not with us anymore. Right, right. right. That'd be a little right. Yeah, it was, it was a gift word mm -hmm. of a publicist friend of mine a few years ago that really nailed it for yeah. me. Yeah, put it in the in the in a in a great perspective for me, and uh, a rebirth of, right. of sorts. Um, but we, you know, we had an old audience to to play to. But after that, the old thing comes down with me is like, what the hell do you want to do next? Right. And I don't want to be our, my own cover band. Right. So right. we, you know, successfully were able to please those audiences. But there's there's no new direction. I'm I'm still not happy. I'm not at, I'm not in there anymore. Well, what happened was there was just a whole bunch of people, young people, a generation, generation and a half, some of them, right. removed from our original fans so who had picked up on some old new writer stuff and already knew the lyrics, just started to love songs again instead right. of this, this alleged jam on crap. Right. You know, on, right. and on and on and on and on and on. Add infinitum, add pukum. Right. You know, and, <laughs> and just like, just started to love good songs, you know, that we had from, from, from uh, John Dawson, stuff we had from mm -hmm. Peter Rowan. And, um, and once we, we could have those new people coming, we had new people to go to to play these songs for. Mm -hmm. and, and that generated, that energy generated a whole feeling of, yeah, man, we can keep this up for a little longer. And that's when Hunter picked up and caught on and caught fire and for us and with us mm -hmm. and then delivered yeah. those songs to Nelson and then we took those and right. went and another direction. thing just is them. continually growing, you know. And then there are new songs coming down the pike all the time from Hunter and we're bring, we're adding new songs, um, you know, uh, you know, it's like an insane idea, and I know it's not going to happen. Yeah. But in my head, I'm already thinking, well, maybe we can do another album, get it out in about eight yeah. months. You know? <laughs> it's not going to happen. Although but, you never know, right? You, you can never say never, right? But I mean, you guys, um, the the new songs with Robert, Robert, right. I also noticed was. With uh, on Bob Dylan's new album called he's Rolling Island, he's, he, he seems like he's keeping <laughs> he's not himself resting on his laurels. No, <laughs> yeah, really. no he's, he's, he's he wrote them all but one. I'm told. Yeah, 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 that's it. Yeah. yeah, well, the one was if you listen to the one that he right. didn't write, it's Willie Dixon's, uh, right. you know, song with Bob's words right, in right. it. You know, so. Right. But uh, yeah, I mean, he seems like he's still got you know he's got got his chops. You oh, guys no got question it. about it. I think Robert. I think. He, He's obviously written some unbelievable stuff over the years, but right. I think he's still writing some unbelievable lyrics. Right. You know, uh, I mean, when I, I look at the lyrics to all the stuff that he's written for us, I'm like, wow, I'm just blown away. Yeah. You know? And it's a story. You know, that's like you said, it's a story. That's you know, the song right. is a story. It's telling like right. from the beginning to end what's happening right. to somebody or right. something or some concept. Right. And it's not like you know, just throwing words out there and then jamming. Right. Right. Know? Exactly. Right. New Where I Come From CD. Let me just make sure I put the right one in the right uh, drawer here. Because yeah. I got them both loaded up. Right. Um, let's see. Okay, so this is the one we want. And uh, this is Ghost Rider Blues. We'll Ghost take Train Blues. Ghost, Ghost Train, Train Blues. Blues. We'll take a listen to this. Robert Hunter, writ written, written, is this with uh, David Nelson? With David Nelson. Nelson. David, David Nelson, Nelson. Robert Hunter. Right? And uh, New Riders of the Purple Sage right here on Brookdale Public Radio. questions no you know we're not magicians we can't read your mind we read your questions each and every kind what are the side effects doctor doctor how many times have you done this before Hey, what are all these t 
tests even for for good. Keep junk mail from filling up your mailbox by calling. Answer the call. This could be good. Hey, you. It may seem intimidating. But really, it's one of the easiest things you can ever do. I've been practicing. Good. You're gonna need it. <laughs> Help America's youth. Be a friend. Be a mentor. Just be there. Go to bigbrothersbigsisters.org. So, do you have any questions? What is your soup of the day? Uh, we have a mulligatawny soup. Oh, do you have any specials? We have a steak special today. Oh, how is that cooked? That's pan seared and then... Does it come with a side dish? Is it grilled? Can I have it steamed? So, what do you recommend? What kind of pie do you have? You an actor. Aren't you from Ohio? Any questions? Ask questions. For the 10 questions everyone should know, go to ahrq.gov. Now the good news. Every ton of recycled paper saves enough electricity to power a three-bedroom house for an entire year. Answer the call. This could be good. Saving lives in the world's poorest countries. Winning the fight against global AIDS and extreme poverty. There aren't two sides to these issues. There is only one. Please vote. One.org. Steve Coogan with you in, here in the studio of Brookdale Public Radio, and we have Buddy Cage and Michael Falzerano with us today. We're talking about uh, their upcoming shows up in Whippany, New Jersey, this Sunday night at uh -huh. the Ukrainian something, something, something. something. Uh, but uh, we also have the shows coming up at the Stone Pony and at BB King's on the 4th, I believe. You guys right. are going to be Stone Pony on the 6th. Stone Pony on the 6th. That'll be a full day. We have the Jazz and Blues Festival, so everybody that's uh, down there when you're done, right over to the Stone Pony. That's, all right. that's the way to go. Make it a total musical day. Right. And uh, we just heard that song, Ghost Town, we were to Ghost Train uh, Blues, excuse me, and uh, we were talking about you guys did that. You know, all together in the studio, you Correct. Know, as it sounds, that's how you guys put that's, it together. That's how it came out. And uh, we were just uh, also talking about, uh, I was going to ask you guys about back in the day, how, uh, you know, you guys got together kind of. I mean, you had started the band, and then there was a hiatus, and then you guys came back in 2005, and you're right. in current form that you're in now. And, uh, like, how did that kind of evolve and come about? Well, back in the day... We'll need Buddy Cage to, <laughs> to get us back in the, the day. historian of the band. Well, <laughs> in, the, in the beginning, John Dawson had written these incredible little tunes that he'd... And I don't mean little to, de to deprecate. I just that they just... Nobody was taking him seriously. And the Grateful Dead were bouncing around doing things. And he kind of uh, kept poking around Garcia and... And, and and telling him that he should be part of this thing, and these were great tunes to have and stuff. And Jerry was kind of, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and and 
And then Jerry caught the bug about playing pedal steel. He just got lit up about that. And since he did that, then John saw his way in oh. and said, Hey, you could be playing pedal steel on all these, you know, new song, these songs of mine. <laughs> and Jerry went, uh, yeah, he needed somebody to play them with and play his pedal steel, his new pedal steel with. So he says, well, look, I just want to come in as a side man. Don't ask me to do anything else. And once they did, of course, Jerry came in as a Leo yeah. and started to run. To, okay, we're going to go down to Pizza Parlor in Palo Alto. Or anything, you know. And Coysman will come down and play drums. And uh, you know, Lesh will come in and play some bass, you know. And yeah. and this went on for so long until they finally organized. Because nobody else, even Phil and, 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 and Bill, they weren't really interested. Mm -hmm. So... Um, because Jerry was god awful on the thing at the beginning, you know. Like, oh, oh, yeah, oh, 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 yeah. God. <laughs> um, that's, yeah, I was that doesn't come right to you, you know. <laughs> you know, and, and uh, here's Smoke, another one. <laughs> and it'll sound better, you know. But it never sounded better. And then, so finally they got Nelson in, and who'd come back from doing some kind of hiatus in Los Angeles. And and, uh, and then, he, then he got called his friend David Torber, came back from Hawaii, and, and they all came. Then they had a group. And Jerry says, okay, we can do this, man. We can keep doing this. Because we can go out and open for ourselves, for the dead. Mm -hmm. So here, here comes the six-hour show. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> and it was amazing until Jerry had to depart that scene. And he was getting frustrated, too, because he wasn't finding any, you know, a more, much more amusement in being a mediocre, half-assed mm -hmm. uh, steel player. So he right. says, guys, you got to, you know, i got to go back to my day job with the Grateful yeah. Dead. And, you guys got to find a ringer. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and I a real a ringer. Uh, they found me on the train. <laughs> and uh, so Jerry was, we were still going to open for them with me as the new guy playing steel. So mm -hmm. that went on for a number of years. And then we had our own careers and branched out. And then because there was, going back to no new material, there was no new material coming in by 1979. And I just was fed up with it. And I took about a year off and... And it came, asked me to come back and do another album, which is the last, thank God, studio album. Was that and like 83? No, that was like not. 1980. And we, okay. but, but by 82, we'd split up for good because there was just nothing else coming in. Mm -hmm. So it was just getting tired and trite. And, uh, and uh, ever since then, I think Nelson was doing other musical projects, and I was. And and uh, we were kind of were like coastal, bi-coastal stewards of of new writers at that point to help protect the 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 name and the, you know John Dawson was going at himself for the next god awful fifteen years playing his own stuff again you know and for whatever that was worth um, I guarantee you things got really nasty during that time he wasn't making a lot of friends mm -hmm. and uh, things were getting really weird but by the time he retired in ninety seven because of health and other things and stuff. Finally, by '05, somebody was really offering some decent money for us to go out and do some things. So Johnny Markowski came into it, and Ronnie Pinkwe on bass, and and Johnny said, uh, "Got that band in, from Bergenfield, New Jersey, is Stir Fried." Okay. Yeah, yeah. So and then Michael, thank mm -hmm. God, was in, you know came in to uh, to bring all his, mm -hmm. his, his skills and talents in, and we then we had a band, right. and, and even one that Nelson can go, hey. <laughs> and it's, it's, this again. Yeah, you know. and it was one of those again spontaneous combustion things. Right. It wasn't like I, I tell you, being a member or being in the New Rise of the Purple Sage prior to October of two thousand five was nowhere on my radar. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, you were busy with the hot tuna. Well, busy in hot tuna, right? and then you know for a couple of years I was banging around New York City, playing with Buddy, you know, and various different things and, and different Vassar. Things, Vassar and all mm -hmm. kinds of people and doing doing a lot of really fun stuff, mm -hmm. staying real busy, and then. Uh, you know, I'd gone over to Amsterdam. My kid was playing uh, soccer over there for a while, so I was living oh, cool. there for a bit. And the day I got home, the phone rang. It was Buddy saying something about, "Hey, you know, we're going to think about doing this new writers thing. You want to, you want to do it?" And I said, oh, it's great because I love the songs. I played this all the songs at, when I was younger in many bands I played around, around New York. Mm -hmm. So I thought, I, even all, I already know all the material. This is great. I don't even have to do any homework. <laughs> That's always I'm good. I'm <laughs> And one thing led to another. We played the five shows. They were successful. They sold out. And, you know, we've been playing 100 shows a year almost uh, for the last three, four years. And it's been really great. I, I think maybe we can play one of the, uh, from the 
Sure. You, radio Mix is live yeah. bonus, which you right. can only get at the shows. You can only get at the shows, right. At this particular time. It originally was only for radio, but we, uh, we printed up a bunch so we can sell them at the shows. And you should go to the show just so you can pick this up, right. because there's some really right. terrific stuff on right. here. Um, which, uh, which one could I get? Uh, how about, uh, let's see... Louisiana Lady, is that a live one? Yeah, yeah it's live. Let's do that. Okay. That's great. Let's that's do that one. Louisiana okay. Lady is an old favorite, and uh, I think that's one. Yeah, you, want, you might want to make a mental note of this. Listen to the rhythm Nelson's playing on it, okay? Mm -hmm. The reason why nobody else has been able to recreate it is he's playing it like a, uh, uh, a New Orleans Cajun beat. Right. Okay. okay? That's the trick. Right. And everybody trying to cover that thing um, that's a John Dawson tune. Right. Everybody trying to cover that has never could quite get that. Right, like a country that's song. That's what they do. That's a, and that's what we also were talking about before. Is that's one of the things about you guys is that there's no you can't find other bands that sound like you guys. You really can't. You guys have an original sound that uh, is something that uh, yeah. everybody. Well, I think it's, you know it, it think. definitely stems from the sound of. Buddy's pedal steel against the mm -hmm. B string bender of David Nelson mm -hmm. and David Nelson's guitar tone and Buddy's tone. You know that's what you know that's what separates bands from other bands. It separates guitar players from other guitar players. You know, I have I've had this conversation with with David Nelson many times about how he sounds like him. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and right. there. Are, there, there are other guitar players out there that are more technically better and play more notes and play faster and all that kind of stuff. And he, and sometimes he's a little like, oh, man, I wish I was like that guy. I'm going, Dave, that's one guy you don't want to be like. Because everybody wants to be you. You have a sound. That guy sounds like all the other 150 guitar right, players. Right? Right. So I think that's what really you're talking about. That's the sound mm -hmm. of the new rise of the Purple Sage. You know? Well, let's take a listen to the Louisiana Lady Tune live right here. In Bookdale Public Radio, 90.5 the night. Ride a bike. If just one million people replaced a five mile car trip once a week with a bike ride, we could reduce CO2 emissions by about 100,000 tons a year. Answer the call. This could be good. Hey, you. Odds are, if you're African American, you're twice as likely to suffer a stroke as white Americans. Know where you stand, because beating the odds isn't about winning, it's about living. Join the power to end stroke at strokeassociation.org. Light the way. Motion sensor lighting can reduce your average energy consumption by as much as 33%. Answer the call. This could be good. Hey, you. In 1977 in Johannesburg, South Africa, an eight-year-old boy picked up the game of golf from his father. By the age of nine, he was already out playing him. The odds of this gentle lad winning the Junior World Golf Championships at the age of 14, one in 16 million. The odds of that same boy then making it to the US and European Pro Golf Tours, one in seven million. The odds of the Big Easy winning the Open Championship once and the US Open Championship twice, one in 780 million.
The odds of this professional golfer having a child diagnosed with autism? One in 150. Ernie Else encourages you to learn the signs of autism at autismspeaks.org. Early diagnosis can make a lifetime of difference. Stay on the line. Every year, the average trash can contains the potential energy for 500 baths, 3,500 showers, or 5,000 hours of television. Answer the call. This could be good. Hey, you. Coogan here with you in Brookdale Public Radio Studios with Buddy Cage and Michael Files around. Michael, also I wanted to tell you I really loved the uh, new latest solo album that you Oh, thanks a, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. I've yeah. used that uh, actually uh, every every week on the Box of Blues. I do a uh, CD of the week and I've used yours, Three Cuts Deep. We do. And, oh, uh, man, thank you. So very good stuff there. Thank you. Yeah, Buddy played on a bunch of those. Yes, I, do, I definitely know. I got everybody I know to play on that <laughs> CD. <laughs> That's what it looks like. This, uh, And I love the way that when, in the inside liner right. notes, when you uh, you know, say right. who's doing right. what on what right. particular song. Right. You know, that always is good good information. Right. <laughs> good to have. Right. But uh, thanks again, guys, for coming down. I really appreciate uh, you being with us. Well, thanks for having you us. Know, we had a great, great time. Treat for me. Thanks for playing the stuff. Yep. Hopefully, you'll keep playing the stuff. Oh yeah, I try to keep the music alive. Yeah. You know, that's because uh, as you said, we need to turn on the future generations. Well, that's, the, stuff, that's what it's know. all about. That's, that's what it's all about. So you know, hopefully, we'll see you guys at uh, the Stone Pony on the sixth. Definitely be down there. King's on the 4th and on the 31st at the Ukraine American Cultural Center. Good stuff. I've just been there it is. Script. <laughs> that is the exact location. In Whippany, New Jersey, 60 North Jefferson Road. Okay. And Thanks all the information you need can be found at thenewriters.com. There you go. Thanks very much okay. for having us over today. Appreciate it. Too. We're going to take you out with uh, one called the title track, actually, yeah, from where I come track. from. We'll go with that one. And uh, thanks again to Buddy and Michael for being here. This is where I come from.